Hello guys and welcome to the second episode of our Pathfinder series, Wrath of the Righteous, where we are playing as Othanar. Here we go here. again! He is an elf archer, and last time we just were introduced to what has happened in the, in the game, and now we can proceed. I've also noticed in the previous video that my sound wasn't exactly good, so I increased a little bit the master sound of the game, so I hope this makes a little bit of a difference for you. So yeah, let's go. Uh, I'm going to change the formations here because I don't like to move in a line or uh, to be... I don't know how to say it... to be so... to, to have our party be so long and not exactly... I don't exactly feel that this is an optimal way of playing. So, let's continue onwards exploring this cave and this is another... yeah, trendless cave. Okay, and there is an enemy of ours. Let's see, we can maybe have the first shot on him. Or hmm. the fly, whatever I got it this. is. Save the last one for me. Yeah, I know about in the turn-based mode. Okay, and uh, we killed her, apparently. Wow, 22 damage. <laughs> Was this a critical shot? One plus one. Yeah, critical hit. <laughs> this was quite a good, quite a good Let's shot. We can do. Let's continue onwards. See what we can. Okay, here is another enemy. Maybe we can one-shot it as well. Do not fear. Do not uh, waver. Almost. Uh, and I should have, I should have done this before combat actually. Let's uh, reorganize a little bit Camellia's um, skills so that it's more comfortable for us to play with her. Okay, those those are some buff skills I think. Battle Spirit, it increases... Mm, yeah, as you can see, oops. As you can see, it increases attack rolls and damage for one round or something like that, for allies within 30, me 30 feet from uh, Camellia. And let's put this here as well, and this is also a buff, so I'll put it from this side. And this is a healing spell, let's put where the buffs are. Okay, this is a demoralize spell, which is also very useful. Uh, and yeah, here defensive stance. That will be it for Camellia. Let's charge with her though. Ah, missed it. That's fine. Let's go onwards with Seal and there are some spitting centipedes. Hope they don't make a problem for us. Uh, we can't can't really move into the enemy, so I'm going to move somewhere here, somewhere around here to see the enemies better. Oh, okay. This wasn't very cool. Let's try to finish this. Okay. Uh, how are we doing actually? Are we hitting them well? 17. As you can see here, we have a 17 attack result, so we have a row of 12 and a modifier of 5. This means that basically we have a 5 plus 5 every time, but we roll 12 out of 20. And their target and their armor class was 12, so we were able to hit. That's great. Uh, and otherwise, I'm not going to attack her, but attack the centipede but I'm going to move away from her try to Damn make you. some distance between us okay and Scylla can you attack the light take you okay we destroyed those centipedes as well is there anything here here we go okay some some nice loot let's see if we can use any of those 
And uh, those are potions that we can use, but I feel like I don't feel like they are very useful being equipped on your companions. I think that you can equip them basically during combat and this is much more useful. Okay, we have some lucky bracers and they increase our armor class and reflexes. Can you can we give them to anybody else? No, maybe they are some engraved lucky bracers and that means that they can be used only by us. I have no idea. Uh, those armor bracers, they give us one armor bonus, however, uh, bonuses can't be stacked, so together with the armor they don't really, aren't really useful, and I think all of our characters have an armor, yeah, they all have a, an armor, but our horse doesn't, and I think that it can use bracers, yeah. And if you can see here in those statistics, these are our different armor classes and we can increase its armor class by equipping one of those bracers. Otherwise for those maces, is it better than our longsword? Doesn't appear like... Nah, it isn't better than our longsword, so let's keep the longsword on. And... Maybe we can put on our main character some mm, melee equipment because I just want him to be better in melee if the need arises. Okay, let's continue exploring the cave though. Not waste any more time here. Oops. I can handle it. Okay, almost started this combat. I hope that they don't see us right now. Okay, they didn't see us. That's great. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. We'll Let's attack it with our main character. What damage did we do? We dealt two damage. Okay, not very good damage. Oh, and I'll turn on the, the fighting defensively ability for Scylla so that we can we can deflect more of the attacks and we can uh, basically be better defensively with her. I think that she is going to be our tank. Okay. And our horsey can attack. With a charge here, oh, that's great. Great performance by our horse up to now, I really like it. I haven't played too much with companions, with uh, animal companions, that is. And uh, I really like it up to now. Uh, okay, let's, let's turn off the fighting defensively ability. It doesn't really, we don't really need it in this fight. No but later on we can turn it on if we don't forget, of course. And Are you still here? This giant sense of it, great. We're doing great up to now. I really like it. Those are, these are some loot again. I think there were some ingredients for uh, alchemy and here stuff. All week. Monitor lizard. I think that this is one no of the to tougher enemies in the beginning. I am a very popular extraplanar hero from another planet. Why doesn't anyone hear about me? Okay, two damage to it. Still, that's fine. I think it's one of the tough enemies in the beginning for sure. Look, twelve damage, and it's still quite <laughs> alive. Maybe I can use the demoralized spell on him, or demoralized action, I have no idea. And let's use this thing, and demoralize. I'll have some persuasion skill check against the monitor lizard, and we failed. It had... So we rolled 5, and we had modifiers of 2, but it had 14 difficulty, so we kind of failed this. Uh, let's just 
close the distance here with Sila. And this is another great feature of our animal companion. It can have three, three separate attacks, which is, I think, very, very awesome in the beginning. So let's let's have let's have it attack the monitor later. Then. Okay, great. It wasn't even wasn't even um, able to move this monitor lizard otherwise we couldn't skin it because our war nature um, actually wasn't successful here but that's fine don't think that we lost something and here are some the demons characters that we're going to meet let's see who is this no I can't just walk away it's got to be here somewhere. You struggle to make out the man's features in the gloom. As soon as he steps into the circle of light, however, you realize that you have never encountered a creature like this before. The stranger looks like the work of Vivisionist or Vivision, yeah, Vivisionist, uh, who attempted to stitch together a lizard and a man. When do I? The man notices you and freezes. The curling horn throwing from his head casts a ma malevolent shadow on the cave wall. Lan, did you find it? Who is that? The woman looks as strange as her companion, like a cross between a cat and a spider. When the when she catches sight of you, she immediately drops into a fighting stance. Her movements reveal the lethal grace of a wild predator. The do-gooders here to save our mongrel souls, no doubt. Wait, they might know what's going on up there. Lan stops her with a gesture. Okay, what shall we speak to them? Demons are laying waste to cannabis. If things are as bad as you say, then we all have to hurry. Lan expressions hardens. You didn't come from the direction of the shield maze. Damn it. I couldn't care less about what's happening on the surface, but the maze. When Dulak looks over, looks you over, considering something. I realize that you guys have your own troubles, but we need to be in Canabras. People are dying up there. Please, show us the way out. Who are you, thieflings? Tieflings are the descendants of people who sullied themselves by mating with demons. Our ancestors would never sink that low. We are the underground crusaders, the children of the crusade's finest. Sadly, underground crusaders is a bit of a mouthful. So people usually just call us mongrels. <laughs> you just love repeating that, don't you, Lan? Mongrels. That's what the Uplanders call us. But we call ourselves Neethers. No matter what you call us, it's not going to stop our horns, hooves, or tails from growing. I've never heard of underground crusaders before. In Canabras, they're called mongrels. People say that they come up to the surface at night and eat anyone foolish enough to wander alone after midnight. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I thought you guys were just a tale to tell kids at night. <laughs> That's human gratitude for you. Our forefathers suffered the consequences of demonic corruption, all to protect Mendev and Golarion. And for what? So we could become monsters used to frighten children. Once again, guys, I'm not going to read all of this. If you are interested, you can pause the video and read them through. They have some lore here about those things. Every mongrel has their own take on it. Our chief, for example, thinks of us as something like a reserve military force. He thinks we're standing by until the moment we're needed, and when we emerge on the surface and save the day, all the people will see how good we are, and they'll love us for it. 
Yeah, he leaves that last part out when he talks about it, of course, but it's easy enough to read between the lines. What is this place? This is the hall where we remember the glory of our forebears. Sorry about the mess. Uh, it doesn't usually look like this, trust me. Sometimes we even wipe the dust off the exhibits. This is where the relics of the First Crusaders are displayed. Our lives are short. Our glories are quickly forgotten. But this place helps us to remember that we are just as worthy as anyone else. And that our lives are not lived in vain. Oh, the First Crusaders? You've been down here that long? That's crazy. <laughs> what are you doing here? That's none of your bit. We're looking for a holy sword. It was here, in the center, sticking out of a rock. The sooner we find it, the better. Some kids from our tribe took off for the shield maze. They figured it had collapsed, and now it's their time to go up to the surface, like all the legends foretold. Except they don't have a clue what's waiting for them up there. They're not fighters. And Sul, the chief of our tribe, is dead set against it. He says that now isn't the time for the underground crusaders to take up arms. If we get the holy sword, we might be able to change the chief's mind. <laughs> it's a fool's errand. None of us will be able to hold the sword, let alone use it to save anyone. It's not an ordinary weapon. It's made from righteous heavenly flame and will burn anyone who touches it. Do you think you're special, Lan? I'll pick it up with my teeth and tie it to my hand if I have to. It doesn't matter. An angel's sword and a troop of stalwart mongrels will be able to work a minor miracle. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, you're still here, Wendu, which means that deep down, you know it's possible. Okay. What is this maze? Maze? Does it really lead to the surface? Yes. There are other ways up, but they are far from here. And after the earthquakes, there's a good chance they've collapsed. But the maze... There's a legend among our people that when the walls of the maze fall, that will be a signal for us, the underground crusaders, that the time has come to go up to the surface and fight the demons in the final confrontation. <laughs> Until then, the people say the maze is shielding us from taking rash actions. I'm the only one in our whole tribe to have been in the maze. And even I don't know if it's true. But the further I went in the maze, the fresher the air became. That means that it really must lead to the surface. Okay. When the ceiling and walls started shaking, the young ones in our tribe lost their heads. They figured the maze was going to collapse, so it was time to go up to the surface. They grabbed whatever weapons were on hand and ran off toward the maze. They think the maze is no longer a danger to them. They've been listening to Wendwog too much. His eyes are filled with genuine concern. Don't try to blame this on me. Yes, I told them that our people are capable of making our way through the maze. In the future. But I always told them to wait until I had made a map of all the maze's dangers. I warned them a hundred times. But it was no use. My words just went in one ear and out the other. You hear a hint of emotion in Wendwak's voice for the first time. A sort of holy flame? How did it wind up down here? It came here with its owner. A long time ago. 50,000 gongs to be precise. Wow, what does it mean 50,000 gongs? 70 years ago, in wow. Uplander time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 50,000 gongs ago, our forebears found a dead angel here, along with the bodies of his comrades. The tribe gave them a dignified burial, and they were laid to rest with their weapons. 
but the flaming angelic sword was stuck in a rock, and no one was able to pull it out. It burned to the touch, like real fire. So the rock was placed over the angel's grave. It should be here somewhere. Maybe the angel will dig himself out and find the sword for us. That might be our best shot in this chaos. <laughs> Len, watch your tongue. We will find the sword faster if we work together. I'll help you. Thanks. An extra pair of eyes can only help. The sword will be easy enough to spot. It looks... Uh, Sorty, help us, and in return, we'll get you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking. Let's get to work. It's a good thing we all bumped into each other, isn't it? What? You want to find the sword quickly, so the underground monsters bring you back to the surface. So be it. Okay, that's great. Some interactive objects aren't easy to find. Moving past such an object, every character automatically makes a perception skill check. If the check is successful, the object is found, it is highlighted, drawing your attention and can now be interacted with. Interactive objects are highlighted, okay. That's great. Let's see, can we talk Sound with them? Anything? Okay. Can we talk with Wendelak? Okay. War Religion 19. Well, is, our, is any of our characters actually good in religion? Uh, plus one, plus three. No. Is our horse good in religion? <laughs> okay, but there is some loot here, so let's take this. And there is some statue. This one was beyond me. Statue of Unknown Knight. The technique is crude, but the figure was clear, clearly crafted with genuine feeling. Alright. Now what is that? Okay, there's there is some loot here as well. And these are some junk stuff I think. Some other junk. Is that a trap? What is this? The room looks like an improvised muse museum or perhaps some kind of a temple. Ooh, gems. That's great. I think it's also junk or something like that. I found something. What's that there? Okay, a lot of uh, interacting, interactable objects here. What do we have here? I found uh, something. Okay, here and this is the last one. Oh, and it uh, has another interaction with it. A strange flash pierces the gloom and Othenar feels the drops of searing blood run down his chest. The wound healed by Terendalef reopens and weeps scarlet, but there is no pain or weakness. A hazy scene appears, a cave chamber. This one or another one entirely? Othenar's heartbeat quickens and stream of Thoughts suddenly burst into his mind. Thoughts that clearly belong to another. Treachery. They betrayed me, trapped me and stabbed me in the back. My trusted allies, my trusted friends, the people I swore to protect. The people for whom I descended from heaven and became and came to the, this turbulent mortal world. There they are, up ahead. In the gloom of the cave, what are they waiting for? Are they afraid to draw any closer? Do they believe I am about to die from their traitorous blows? Next time, next to me, a quiet moan. 
A girl with a golden braid lies on the rocks clutching her slashed side. She refused to join with the traitors and paid dearly for it. I could have tried to run, but I will not. Whilst I still have strength, I must. While recognizing the foreign origin of these thoughts, Othanar intuits that he can control them somehow. Let's try to heal the wounded girl. A spark of healing magic illuminates the eerie, murky scene before Othanar. The wounded girl opens her eyes and whispers, Wario, you, you said that everything was going to change soon. You said that you and the other warriors of heaven would be leaving us on a grand mission to stop the demons forever. Is that true? The frenzy of foreign thoughts comes faster and faster, like a rushing river and images flash by one after another. A priestess in powerful robes observing the stars, a young female paladin praying clutching her glowing sword, a majestic golden winged angel gazing into the distance, his face covered by a helmet but his voice ringing clear, only if you are willing and only if you are ready, there is no going back. Then don't waste your strength healing me, the girl whispers, your mission is more important, you take care, it is near, there is the vision, the, there in the vision, the darkness in the cave stirs into motion. Something massive appears from within its depths. A vague shadow, an outline, a nightmare come to life. A wave of odious chir chirruping and rustling emanates from the shadow. The sound piercing like hot irons lancing through flesh and bone. The traitors fall to their knees before the shadow in reverent ecstasy and the wounded girl thrashes in her death throes. The yawning chest wound burns white hot. Othanar's head pounds with pain and it is no longer clear whose pain it is. The person called Wario who sent this vision or the one unlucky enough to receive it. Okay, let's see what kind of check are we going to be more better suited to. Mm. Let's go with the Knowledge Arcana because we have two here. But Othanar knows how to resist malign influence such as this, no matter its origin. Okay, we failed. Great. Uh, the force of this terrifying attack originated though originating into a vision, is much greater than anything Gothanar can withstand. Crippling fatigue drags him to the ground, hands trembling, cold piercing his skull and slowly creeping along his spine. The one who sent the vision is experiencing something similar, he is broken and exhausted. A monstrous shadow emerges from the murk of the cave. It is not real, it exists only in this strange vision of our memory, but the thrill of fear it provokes is more than real. The shadow features starkly resemble those of Descari, the terrifying demon lord. In a movement as swift as though itself, the monster hand is wrapped around the throat of the one they called Lario. The foolish angel struggling on the rocks like a fly with its wing torn off. Intones the shadow, its voice changes it as it moves, shifting from a quiet whispering to a sonorous shout, becoming young, then old and quavering. Where is your goddess angel? Where is her self-assured herald? How is this? How is that? 
You are dying here alone so far from the side of your heaven. A strange calm envelops the thoughts of the one called Wario. He recognizes who stands before him and he knows he will never bow down before this enemy. The flaming sword flares to life in his hand. Bright, pure, flickering with multicolored sparks like a sunbeam through stained glass. Slash! The blade slices through the demonic creature's flesh and the monsters recoil with a hole, releasing his grip on Lario's throat. The angel falls back heavily on the rocks, his vitality is ebbing, but his pride remains undiminished. He grips the sword and with his blast burst of strength plunges it into the rock. Osanar senses that the vision is fading, the rush of thoughts diminishing like a river running dry. The last thing he hears is this. You will kill me monster, this I know, but one day someone will come here and trace up my sword. They will raise it up and... Okay... Save and protect the innocent. <laughs> the vision disappears, vanishing in a burst of colors. Othanar does not hear the final words, but he seems to complete the thought, taking it to the heart. The words fly from his lips, and with them something else. The heat blazing in the Othanar's chest just fades away. The edges of the scarlet wound close, leaving not even a scar behind. Looking down, Othanar sees the flaming sword in his hand or rather its outline, the memory of what the sword looked like. With the final surge of form and soothing light, the sword vanishes and the light is drawn into his hand. Otanar senses that it will return, and all he needs to do is to call it. Hey! Are you all right? You were kind of glowing just now. <laughs> Sila kneels before the light, offering up a prayer to him to Iomedi. That... that was it. The light of heaven, but how? Plan looks at you, dumbfounded. What did you do with it? Where did it go? When Dwak frowns. You saw it too? The traitors, the dying girl? It's only us here. Your group, you, me, Wendu, and the light of heaven that sort of got, uh, sucked into you? Any chance you can whip it out again? We do kinda need it. Sorry, I crack jokes when I get nervous. And when I'm upset. And when I'm happy. <laughs> anyway, what I said, it came out wrong. We need to bring you to Chief Sum. You can show everyone the light of heaven, we'll rally the tribe and go into the maze and we'll get back our kin. And what if he can't make it happen a second time? What then? The tribe will just say we're crazy and turn its back on us. I think I saw the memories of Lario, the angel who died here. Lario? That really was Lario? The angel from the legends? The ancestors even got his name right on the gravestone. The chief will be thrilled. You. Thousands of gongs and no one's been able to touch it. And now you, an ordinary creature of flesh and blood no different to us, get the sword and start talking about visions. Wendwak watches you with suspicion. Now, now, Wendwak, don't be a sore loser. He is clearly different from us. The sword appeared before him, along with the angel's name and all that other stuff. Because he doesn't carry our mongrel taint. Heaven doesn't give a damn how special we are. We're born with evil inside us. Heaven doesn't need to know any more than that. 
I know you're willing to tear anyone apart to uphold our people's honor, but you and Sul, you just refuse to face the truth. We are the way we are because our ancestors' bodies were corrupted by the Abyss. It does the same thing to plants and animals. There's nothing heroic or special about it. It doesn't make us better, and it doesn't make us worthier. Seems I can control it, and this action will reveal the light of hell. That is just... Wow, I mean, that's amazing! Heaven has truly blessed you. This power is the most majestic thing I've ever seen in all my life. Is this what the sun is like, Lan? When the walk stares at the divine light as if transfixed. Yes, it's similar. But this light is more... golden? Chief Sol needs to see this. Now that we have the power of angels on our side, he can't say no. He'll have to assemble a troop to storm the maze. You Uplanders care about your kids, right? Help us save ours. Without them, we won't survive. And then... The perils of the maze won't be so bad if we go together. We'll make our way through it and find the way to Canabras. Lan looks at you pleadingly. Lead us to your chief and tell this height if I'm going to help you or not. Let's go. We'll take the short route. Well, the only route, really. <laughs> Sometimes interacting with an object requires a skill check, a successful skill check can be necessary for various tasks, climbing over an obstacle, picking a lock or a door or a chest, disarming a trap, moving something heavy, reading an inscription on ancient language and many others. Different tasks take different skill. If you have several characters selected at the same time, the action will be performed by the character with the highest skill bonus, so you should select the whole party before attempting a check. All right, great. Um, however, I think that I'm going to uh, finish it here, guys. We have had some quite a lot of progress. We met Wenduak and Lan, and next time, oh, and we even upgraded, as I can see. Uh, so next time we can continue our adventure and see how things go from there. So thank you very much for watching, please leave a like if you liked the video and subscribe if you want to see more content like that and otherwise bye bye from me.